Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from No Spear Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today we're gonna be checking out some really cool glasses, which is the Rokit Air AR. So let's get started. Now this video is sponsored by Rokit. They did send this over to me for review and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. Now, I'm not necessarily a stranger to augmented reality. I do own a set of HTC Vibes, also Oculus Rifts. So I have played around with VR and AR in those goggles before. But this is the first time I am actually testing glasses that allows for AR. Now, before I start going into the product details, I do want to say I am thoroughly impressed. Now, I did test this for the past week and I've used it every single day to the actual point where I actually found a bug and I was able to report it and they were able to actually fix it. So there are devs behind this working on the application. Now, I did exceed my expectations because I was actually able to get what I wanted out of it, which is augmented reality secondary monitors. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but it's really cool. To start off, the Rokit Air only weighs 83 grams, which is extremely light. On top of that, because goggles like strap over your face, it gets hot. This does not get hot at all because it's open air. You're not strapping something to your face. So I don't get sweaty or anything. So that's a plus in itself when you're wearing something that has VR or AR capabilities. As long as I had these on, when I was playing Switch was about three hours. Well, I was watching a movie, then I played Switch. So about three hours and it still felt comfortable. It didn't feel like anything was hurting my face or anything. This also has adjustments for nearsightedness like me. So I wear glasses and with these on my face, I really can't wear glasses itself, but they do have adjustments. So you can adjust them for your eyes. Now it only goes up to 500 degrees max and I'm about 150 degrees, so it's not too bad. And I was able to adjust for it, but anybody who has 500 degrees or more or negative 5.00D, you're still gonna need contacts or something like that. But anybody under that, you can actually just adjust them for your eyes and they work fine. As far as sitting on your face, it doesn't have those normal earlobes like normal glasses does. It just sits straight across, but it does have these foam pads that keep them firmly in place. It does have built-in speakers and they sound pretty decent. They also have a button on the top right that allows you to adjust the brightness quickly. Now in the packaging, it does come with a USB cable and one end is about 90 degree angle. This way, that's the one that you plug into the glasses and it gets out of your way. And the other one is just a normal USB-C plug. It also comes with a carrying case that you put the glasses in. On the top of the lid, you could actually put all your cables and your hub. On the bottom, you keep your glasses in and it actually is very solid. Now, as far as the accessory goes, there's a bunch of accessories that you can get for this. One of which that I highly, highly recommend is the USB Roki Hub. When I first received these glasses, they actually didn't have the Roki Hub to send over to me. So I was just playing around with it directly hooked to my phone. And I gotta say, these glasses drain a lot of battery. I get about one, maybe two minutes per percent on my battery. So I would have to recharge my phone to 100% before I even used it. And here's the little voltage map. Uh, it's draining about 0.1 amp or almost 0.2 amps uh, just running it. So I highly recommend the hub. And the hub actually also works as a USB-C DisplayPort pass-through. So if you got a switch that supports DisplayPort, this works directly on there and it charges the switch itself. Next, we have this HDMI to USB-C converter. Um, for most computers, when you don't have a USB-C display port out, you have the HDMI, you would probably need something like this just to push the HDMI signal over to the glasses for projection mode of your HDMI secondary screen. You can also buy these straps. So if you're gonna use this for working out, uh, you might wanna use this just in case if it does fall out of your head, you at least it'll catch it around your neck. They also offer uh, interchangeable lenses. I wouldn't say interchangeable. You do have to unscrew two screws just to change the lens. So it's not quick, but they do offer fully opaque and completely transparent. But the one that they sent you is semi-transparent, which is the one I kept on there anyway, because it offers best of both worlds. It's dark enough for you to see the screens clearly, and you could still see through them to see other stuff like your screen and everything. Last but not least, but it's a device that I don't have, which is the wireless module. Um, it is needed if you are using an iPhone, so the wireless module could send the signal over to your glasses. I haven't found the need for it because I use Android phone anyway, so the app works perfectly fine on my Android phone. And offering wireless to a device like this that is so close to my phone and I have my phone with me all the time anyway, uh, doesn't make any sense to me. So that's why I didn't get the wireless module. Now, these glasses offers two modes. AR and VR. The augmented reality mode is really, really cool. Like the name suggests, I'm able to actually place stuff around my environment and move my head to pan and see it. All right, so here we are in AR mode and there's actually a screen displayed in front of me, which has bunches of icons. Now there is cinema, 
AR store, which they just got everything working and they have like a handful of applications that you can check out. Their browser, uh, phone apps, which basically turns your phone into projection mode and allows you to scroll through your phone and everything. Apps list, so if you did install apps, that's where it goes. And then a video player. Uh, you also have some settings over here that I would highly recommend going through. Like I said, there is that AR mode, uh, not AR mode, the IPD, which sets the distance for your eyes and a few more things. Now there are two modes that you could use with this, which is an air mouse. You can actually just turn, use your phone and navigate and it'll use it as like a pointer or touchpad mode. I prefer using touchpad mode because I could just leave it on the desk and then navigate it like a touchpad. Um, so we're gonna go through a few things. Now, cinema is basically, uh, you could say links to YouTube, TikTok, and Hulu and stuff like that. It's just an easier area where everything's gathered. Uh, I don't usually use that. I could just use the browser for everything. Uh, the AR store is their internal store that allows you to download a few handful of apps. They have a few games in here. Um, I did download this, which is Reflux Unit and also Space Wars, I believe, a space game, which is pretty cool. Um, we're gonna test that out in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Then um, you also have your browser. The browser is really cool. This is where I get most of my things working, especially my multi-screen display. So I'm gonna show you an example right here where once you have a browser up, you can place it in the space anywhere you want. And then you can actually add a second tab and you can actually place a secondary screen here. So now in my space, I have two screens. If I look left, look right, I have two screens. One could be YouTube, the other one could be something else. But what's cool is that I actually have it hooked up to my monitor right over here. And I'm gonna use the GoPro to show you what I'm seeing. It's basically my screen and then if I turn my head, I have a secondary monitor. And obviously you can add more tabs or more browsers to do other stuff. So I have my secondary screen, add another browser for YouTube. So that's one of the coolest features that I was able to get working that had a little bug to it, but it's all fixed. And you could do this with um, Linux, Windows, Mac. I've done plenty of videos on how to make a secondary monitor using your web browser. I'm just using the same technique and it works perfectly fine on this. Obviously because it's wireless, it's not one-to-one -one in speed, but it is really, really uh, responsive and I'm able to actually use it as a desktop, especially if I'm playing games and I need like a notepad for, you know, cargo information or something, I don't know. But yeah, that secondary screen does help a lot. Or if you're doing work on your laptop and you need a secondary screen, but you don't want people or carry something, you could just use this as a secondary screen. That's literally what piqued my interest. If it wasn't able to do a secondary screen in augmented mode, then it kind of like defeats the whole purpose because that's what I use my VR for. My VR, I have uh, an application for uh, streaming my desktop, so I could place multiple monitors and that's really what my interest was so going back home their video player is pretty cool uh, I'm not gonna show it right here but I will show you a clip where I'm actually watching a 180 VR video it actually uh, allows for 180 VR or 360 VR so this can play VR videos in this augmented reality space which is another really cool feature because I haven't had anything like this unless you use your phone and stick it into like one of those um, 3D holder mounts that Samsung offers or you can just buy one uh, outside. Um, yeah, this offers that. Now, as far as the clarity goes, these screens are so clear. I'm actually able to read small little tiny fonts. I have no problems doing that. Also, it offers 75 Hertz refresh rate. So it's actually really clear and very smooth. It's very hard to like, explain how clear it is unless you start using it but I could tell you I could read very small fonts off this which is a big ordeal especially for something like this because my VR headsets I still can't read the tiny fonts on my VR headsets just because the way it's built and they have like that huge magnifying glass uh, these are completely different as far as reading fonts and text all right so now we're gonna test out an app uh, actually um, I might have to go to home and I could turn off VR mode uh, it's a little bit easier to kind of like instead of navigate and I could go into my apps list, pop into end space. So here we are with the game end space. Uh, honestly, I don't know if it's recording. It should be recording right now. But as you can see, I'm actually being able to move my head around to look at different aspects of the space. And down here, I could just go and play my mission board. 
and let's go through the tutorial real quick even though I've done it just to show you guys an example now this does turn into a keypad itself and this is really cool so basically I could fly and my guns go along with my head and it wants me to now if I had a controller it would play a little bit better but yeah it's pretty cool especially how clear this is as far as projection mode goes it just displays the screen in front of your eyes just like you're watching this huge monitor uh, you can move it around but it stays stagnant in place but it works really well for something like the switch uh, you can power it on with the hub and play your games on a 120 inch screen right in front of your face i actually had a lot of fun and i was able to read everything clearly playing the switch using these glasses and i think that's going to be my primary way to play the switch now anyway that is it for me guys um this these glasses were amazing um i've been playing around with them i actually carry them everywhere now i bring them to work i bring them over when i have to go see my in-laws i carry them everywhere because i could use them for extra set of monitors especially if you hook them up to a phone or if you want to watch youtube videos or something like that without disturbing anybody this was a perfect way the only downside to this is that there is no physical volume adjustment on this device itself so you have to have some sort of device that supports audio adjustment just so you can raise and lower the volume another thing is they over time they do get a little bit warm right in the front over here not to a point where it's blistering hot but you just got to keep in mind if you're using this outdoors in the sun this does get really really warm uh, in my case it's winter so it's not that bad now as far as use case scenarios these are the things that i'm going to be using it for ar mode on the phone for a secondary screen you've seen that happen that was great um, also projecting my phone onto the screen so i could watch youtube videos or standard stuff like that two um, a display for my switch or you know if you guys got playstation or the switch third thing that i really want to use this for that i haven't had a chance yet is a drone so i have fpv goggles that has hdmi output i want to put the hdmi output into these goggles so i could actually still see through and see if there's pedestrians nearby but also get extremely clear quality video into these glasses while not having to wear those heavy goggles for fpv drones i personally see myself using this a lot because i already have for the past week i've used this everywhere also these goggles have a built-in mic so you can actually use video conferencing with it or it does support uh, commands if you have the rokit app uh, there are commands that you could say like volume up or volume down to adjust the volume so you don't have to press the phone anyway that is it for me guys if you guys have any questions about this hit me up down in the comments below if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say my nerd cave heck till it hurts